Hey everyone, so today we're talking about secondary beveling. And should you put a secondary bevel on your sword? So I've been watching a lot of Matt Easton's videos on Scholar Gladiatoria, and he seems to hate these secondary bevels with a passion. Um, and a lot of other sharpening forums also say secondary beveling is the worst thing you can do to your sword. Now is that really the case? Now the first question we've got to ask is, what is a secondary bevel? So if you imagine your sword um, and then the, the edge coming together, so the face is coming together to create that cutting edge, and that would be your primary bevel. Now what if your primary bevel doesn't quite come to a sharp edge? Then what you can do is you can put a bevel on your primary bevel to create a secondary bevel so that you've got a sharp cutting edge. So that's what a secondary bevel is. Now there's a myth that if you keep sharpening with a secondary bevel, eventually you'll keep putting on more bevels and more bevels and you'll end up with a round edge. Now this is false because if you put a bevel on a secondary bevel, you haven't got a secondary bevel, you've got a tertiary bevel. And yes, if you keep doing this, then yes, you may end up with a round edge, but it's actually really easy just to maintain the same angle that you went in for your secondary bevel, sharpen at that angle again, and you will still have a secondary bevel and still have a sharp sword. Now we've got to think about why the secondary bevels exist. So if you want to create a sword with a primary bevel, then to sharpen that sword, then you have to sharpen along the face of that blade. So if you imagine a katana, then that, that face of that cutting edge is quite large, quite, you've got to sharpen along the whole thing until the two edges come together. And so you've got to go from your low grip all the way up to your high grip to maintain that finish. Um, and if you mess up at any point, then you risk ruining that finish. Now a secondary bevel is a lot easier. You get your, your primary bevel, you slightly increase the angle, not by much, just, just by a little bit, and then you sharpen that. And you take off much less material. And you can stay at lower grits because the finish of the secondary bevel doesn't matter. People don't really notice it or see it. Now does secondary beveling reduce your cutting ability? And the answer is yes. So if you go on a thought experiment with me and you imagine a sword with a cutting angle of zero degrees. Now if we take the normal force to that, then we get it at 90 degrees, and that would be no cutting resistance because a sword with a cutting angle of zero degrees would just cut through anything. Now if you go on the contrary to that, then you have a sword with a cutting angle of 180 degrees. Um, the normal force of that would be at 90 degrees. That would be your maximum resistance because this sword doesn't have an edge. And what we can do is we can map using trigonometry all the different resistances from 0 degrees to 180 degrees and we can create a sine curve. Now with this sine curve, if we take the difference between a cutting angle of 30 degrees and a cutting angle of 35 degrees, then we get a difference of 16% in the cutting ability. It's, it's present, it's something, but it's not double, it's not triple, it's 16% difference in resistance. So the answer is yes, secondary beveling does reduce your cutting ability, but it's not by that much. Now obviously there are other factors at play like what you're cutting through, the thickness of your blade, the thickness of what you're cutting through, and all of this is a very complex physics uh, experiment. But Wolfram Demonstrations has a program that can actually simulate this for you. And this is not a sponsored item, it is free, you can download it. Um, it's called The Physics of Knives by Wolfram Demonstrations, and I'll put a link below, it's really cool. Um, I came across this and I thought it was really cool to be able to simulate and see how much force is required to cut through different targets. Now, Matt Easton often talks about apple seeding, uh, and he, he says it like it's the grand fix to secondary beveling. So what is apple seeding? So if you take your primary bevel and the transition to the secondary bevel, then there's a little corner there, and apple seeding is rounding out that corner so that you reduce the drag there. And it does improve the cutting ability because you've reduced the drag but it doesn't improve the cutting ability by changing your cutting angle. The cutting angle is still the same as with the secondary bevel. So what I think actually happens with most, most of the time when people do this and they say, wow, there's so, so much of a difference compared to before, is that they've actually just gone and sharpened their sword. So while putting on that apple seeding, then they created a sharper edge by sharpening that secondary bevel as well, and so they've just got a sharper sword because you've removed about three microns worth of steel uh, at each cross section, so it's not much. You haven't reduced the drag significantly. You have reduced it, but not by much. And you've also got, you, compared to the thickness of the sword, it's microscopic. So the problems with apple seeding are that if you don't know what you're doing and you try to apple seed, you can create a warped edge. 
Um, and so it's not it's not something that everyone should jump onto if they're not experienced with sharpening with stones or with belt sanders um, compared to a secondary bevel, which is really easy. You pick an angle and you sharpen at it. There's no art in the rounding over. Now, second, uh, apple seeding and secondary beveling were done. Uh, you see on Japanese katanas, then apple seeding was done and they called it niku or meat. And what it did was it thickened that um, primary bevel and gave a little bit more material by creating that apple seed shape so it could shock absorb and it was less likely to break on contact with other swords. Now, Nichu is improved shock at resistance compared to a primary bevel, but it's not actually compared, you know, better compared to a secondary bevel because you're not changing the amount of material. A secondary bevel actually has more material and more thickness than the apple seed of Nichu. So in conclusion, secondary beveling is okay. There's not a problem with it, and it's better than you ruining the face of your katana or your sword because you're trying to keep a primary bevel, or you're getting a warped edge because you're trying to apple seed and you're not sure what you're doing. Secondary beveling reduces your cutting ability by 16%. It's not huge. It is something, but it's not, it's not massive. And it's far better just to have a sharp sword with a secondary bevel than have a dull sword with a primary bevel and say, look, I did not secondary bevel, because then you just got a dull sword that can't cut anyway. Now, if you are going into competition cutting, that's a different story because you want to be at your optimum, so there you should probably keep a primary bevel. But the difference between competition cutting is that a primary edge is needed for competition cutting because you don't come against other swords or hard targets. Um, whereas in actual swords fighting, then you might hit other swords, and so then you want that secondary bevel or that apple seeding um, to give that shock resistance and less likely, make it less likely to break or to splinter and chip. So I hope you learned something today, secondary beveling is okay, keep your swords sharp, and I'll see you next time.